Happy fall. We're so excited for you to join us for our fall edition of Paint with Plaid. If this is your first time joining us, be sure to hashtag all your creations, Paint with Plaid. And if you're returning, we're so excited to have you here for Moonlight Harvest. We are having a good time here, have our fall fest laid out here, and we are about to get started with Moonlight Harvest over with Kira. Hey, there's Tim. <laughs> hey, everybody. Good to be back. Um, we are totally getting cooler weather here in the south, and we are ready to um, paint our pumpkins. We've got an awesome crowd here. Tim, can you share with everybody? So, um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been painting pumpkins since I was little, but we're going to paint some more advanced grown-up pumpkins. So, you can all do this since you've been doing it forever. I'm going to teach you some techniques. I'm going to teach you about... Um, foreground, background, and middle ground. We're gonna do some dry brushing and shading. So we're gonna get started right away. Um, everybody should have their supplies. We're working on a 10 by 10 canvas. And I'll be sure to call out the brushes and the colors that we're using so you guys can all paint along. And as you're painting along, hashtag paint with plaid so we can see what you guys are doing out there. All right. So I'm gonna set this here so we can reference. And with the live audience, as we go, let me know if you have any questions. I think we have some newbie painters. So we're going to start with our pencil, actually, and we're going to sketch out our pumpkins. And the drawing is easy. Think about a pumpkin um, as a heart, but rounded at the bottom. And also, pumpkins are so trendy right now and gourd, so none of them need to be perfect. They're all different shapes and sizes, so just go with it. Let's get it down. We're gonna sketch it and then we're gonna apply our paint and you can cover up a ton with paint. So grab your pencil and we're gonna go about um, three quarters um, of the way up to start our pumpkins. So right about there. And we're gonna start this orange pumpkin first. So this is um, our middle ground. So we're gonna start sketching. And like I said, it's kind of like a heart. If you can see that, don't look at my nails, everyone. I did not get them done for this. And we're going to do kind of like a half pumpkin so it's falling off the edge. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, this is just a guide. Next, we're going to do our foreground pumpkin, which is our white pumpkin. And we're going to overlap a little bit. And our foreground pumpkin is going to be larger because it's in the foreground. So again, you kind of have your heart shape and it rounds out to make your pumpkin. You guys following? Everyone following? Absolutely. Drawing's not scary. You guys got it. So we drew our orange pumpkin in our middle ground, our white pumpkin in our foreground, and then our background pumpkin, this green one, is gonna kinda happen in between the orange and the white. So again, kinda start like you're doing a heart, but round out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of hard to draw like this. So everybody got your pumpkin. So hearts with a round bottom. So you got your background. They're kind of like bums, right? Like little butts on there. <laughs> okay. So once everybody has that, then we're gonna start painting. So we're gonna start with our, um, we're using Folk Art Acrylic. So super creamy, awesome coverage. This is, um, it's gonna be one coat. You're gonna get great coverage. It's really smooth and easy to blend, which we're gonna do on our pumpkins. Um, so we're starting with um, Dark Navy. So put some on your um, paper plate. I have palette paper here. Okay. So you're gonna cover your background, so you want a decent amount. And then we're also gonna put a little bit of your um, wicker white. Just a tiny bit. Okay, everybody got their paint ready to go? This fun little palette. Okay, and then we are using um, angle brushes. And Tim, if you can get this close. These are Folk Art angle brushes, and I love these because they're great for base coating, but you can also get really smooth lines and details. So you can use these angle brushes for any paint project. Um, I'm gonna start with a half inch angle. So that's your largest one in the pack. And um, when I refer to your chisel, this is the chisel. See how it's on an angle? And we're gonna go up on a chisel. So if you hear me, that's what we're doing. 
So this, we're starting out easy. Ready? Everyone ready? Ready out there? Okay. So um, moonlight harvest. So we're going to pretend the moon is up here and we're going to um, have a little bit light in the, um, on the top of the painting and it's going to be a little darker towards the pumpkins. So it's like your moonlight shining down on your harvest pumpkins. So I am going to take my um, dark navy and um, you can always add a little bit of water. Um, but this is really, you'll see how creamy and thick that is. I like to add a little bit of water. And we're gonna start by um, going with the lines that we drew, and we're gonna kind of basically trace that with your paintbrush. Now don't worry if they're per not perfect, because when we go and do the pumpkins, we're gonna get a nice smooth edge. So you just wanna get some color down on there. Um, and I like a more painterly effect. So I like little choppy kind of crisscross brush strokes. You don't need to just paint full on lines. You wanna kind of, um, I'm gonna make noise here on this easel. So kind of crisscross. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. I like a little bit more painterly look to it. So this will take a minute. So if everybody, if you guys are just joining, just getting your uh, snacks and your friends and your cocktails together, we are um, painting with plaid tonight. We're using folk art acrylic paint. We're painting pumpkins. We're in the spirit of fall. It's a little cooler here. We're just coming off of Halloween. And um, so get your paint. You can still catch up. We just sketched our pumpkins out and we are doing some base coating with our dark navy. Hey, if you're out there, let us know if this is your first time. I know Carly Ann out there. Hello. She came back for more Paint with Plaid. Yay! Thank you for joining us. Uh, to answer Angela's question, we'll upload these to YouTube at a later date so you can replay it. And you can also replay it immediately after the live stream is over as well. So you can catch up or throw another Paint with Plaid party at your own house. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go about halfway up. And I'm going to take a little bit of my um, Wicker White and I'm gonna add it to my dark navy. And you can see there just a tiny bit and a lot of white goes a long way. So just a tiny bit and you can always go back in. So you just need a little bit. And now I'm gonna go to the top. I'm gonna start with that same crisscross motion and I'm gonna blend into my dark and blend my dark up. So you kind of get that moonlight effect that we were talking about. And again, there's no right or wrong when you're doing this. If you want your whole background to be really dark, that's fine. If you want it to be lighter, totally fine. So go ahead and I'll um, hurry up and get this done for you guys. So we're basically taking the dark and I'm going right back in with my brush every time, a little bit of dark and a little bit of light, and that's gonna help you blend. So that's just a really good technique if you want to blend your light to dark. So Timmy, can you see that on there? So getting mm -hmm. the, the light and the dark. Everybody no. doing okay? Yeah. All right. All right. A lot of first timers out there hey. watching us. Hey, well, I hope everybody's Enjoying. okay. Yes. Let us know if anyone is out there drinking a pumpkin spice latte. Oh I yeah, right me too. A Brittany is their first time here. Like a pumpkin and cocktail. Lots of lots of first time paint with flatters. Yeah, okay. the white with the blue? You are. A little bit of white with your blue to get your corners. And a little bit goes a long way. And you can always go back in and add. Or if it's too light, just go back in and get your navy and go over that. And here, I'm not like, I'm not cleaning my brush every time. No, I like okay. to use a dirty brush. Yeah. If that's like a good technical term. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I like to use the same brush. I like the mixture of the colors and the two together. And then if they're just not joining us, maybe we take a quick look at the painting. Yeah. Just We have a lot of people just joining us. Thank you all so much for being here. Brittany, I'm so with you. Pumpkin pie milkshake from Sonic. I love Sonic. I didn't even know that I mean. was a thing. <laughs> All right, yeah, so if you're just tuning in, we're painting pumpkins. Um, we are just coming off of Halloween. I'm in fall mode, it's getting cooler here. And um, we just, we sketched our pumpkins and we did our background with the dark navy and the wicker white. So um, I think we're at a good point here. Everybody's looking good out there. I hope everybody's following along and is uh, caught up. 
So next we're um, going to start our pumpkins. So I talked about the background, middle ground, and foreground. So when we drew our pumpkins, we did one, two, three, and we kind of let our third pumpkin happen. Well, now we're gonna build um, from the back forward. So we wanna get our uh, background pumpkin done first, and then we're gonna build, for, build with our middle ground and our foreground pumpkin. So the color we're gonna use is Hauser Green Light. So if you guys wanna wash your brush, I'm gonna use the same half inch angle brush like I said, angle brushes are really good because you can do your base coating, but you can also get a really smooth line when you go with um, your chisel edge. Um, and I'm gonna stick with this half inch. You can go ahead and go down to the 3 8 if you feel like there's a little bit more control with that, but I'm good with this one. So I'm gonna rinse my brush out. Oh yeah, that's, I was just gonna say I don't have a paper towel. I'm gonna steal your napkin. Okay, all right. So get your green. This is our Hauser Green Light. It's a beautiful fall green color. Again, we're using Folk Art Acrylic. So you're gonna get awesome coverage. Okay, everybody has their green, okay? So we are going to base coat our pumpkin. And notice, we didn't draw our stems. We're gonna do our stems at the end. Um, once we find our middle point on the pumpkin, we'll go ahead and do our stems, so don't worry about that. Just let's get the roundness of the pumpkin and the base coating done. So get right in there with your Hauser Green Light. And this is when I talked about you're gonna get, if you use your angle brush, you wanna go up on your chisel and you wanna pull with the shape of the pumpkin. Do you see like, that's so, you just get such a nice clean up on your chisel edge. And you see, if you're getting a little bit of pull with your paint, you might need a little bit more paint or you can just um, dip your brush in water. It's, this paint is truly thick, um, so adding a little bit of water helps. So up on your angle brush, up on the chisel and pull down. So you see you get these perfect edges. And then you can go ahead and fill in. And don't worry about where your um, lines are from your other pumpkins because we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the orange and white so we can clean up those edges. And remember, pumpkins, I've seen so many different shapes and sizes and gourds and so, you know, your pumpkin doesn't have to be perfectly round. Kind of be what you want it to be. And if anyone out there on Facebook, if y'all have any questions for Kira as we're painting, yeah, please we have, let me know. Like I said, we have a lot of first timers. We have people from all over the country, mm -hmm. from Kentucky, lots of Tennessee folks. Hi, Tennessee. Hey, y'all. We're down here in Georgia as well. We have Texas, California, all over the place. Okay. So I hope everybody has their first pumpkin base coated. Hi. That's okay. <laughs> So if you are, um, like Dana said, just tuning in, we're painting pumpkins tonight with folk art acrylic and we're um, talking about shading and blending and foreground, middle ground and background. And um, you know, I said, I've been painting and drawing pumpkins since I was little, but this is like the cool grown up version and you're gonna make a painting when you're done and it's gonna be um, great fall decor. So hope everybody's having fun. And once um, you have your Hauser Green Light um, base coated on your pumpkin, we are gonna take the same brush, and like I said, I like to use the same brush, and we're gonna add um, our coffee bean, folk art paint. Should have told you guys to add your paint before I talked about the brush. So take your folk art coffee bean, and we're gonna put that right next to our green. And throughout doing the pumpkins, you're gonna use your coffee bean as your um, shadow color, like your dark and your wicker white is gonna be your highlight. So that's gonna be for all three pumpkins. So when you're doing your lines or the ridges on your pumpkin or shadow, you're gonna use your coffee bean and any highlight is gonna be your wicker white. So just keep that when you're you know, putting your paint out, you're gonna use a lot of that brown and the white. So to do the lines, you're gonna take, I use the same brush again, um, and I'm using a half inch angle brush I'm gonna load my coffee bean, straight coffee bean. And it's okay if it has a little green on there because we're gonna blend and you want that look of it being blended. 
it's kind of like a more painterly. You're not gonna see like stripes. It's gonna be more blended. So load your brush with the brown coffee bean and we're gonna find that heart or kind of butt shape that we made with the pumpkins. Find that center and you're gonna draw, it's gonna kind of look like a spider when I draw it the first time. And we're gonna go two lines to the left, two lines to the right. Okay, and that's gonna look crazy, but it's gonna get better. So don't be afraid, draw your lines there. You're gonna draw and follow the shape of the pumpkin so you're making it look 3D. And that 3D shading, it's gonna make it look, it's gonna pop. So find the center and pull down. So it's kind of like a little spider. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. And four. four, and if your pumpkin's a little larger, you can go and add another one down the middle. <laughs> Just pick a side, pick your left or right. This with the same brush? Yeah, and you, same edge, and you wanna use your chisel edge. So you wanna find your point and pull down. So you wanna go up like this and pull down. So uh, you can do two on one side, two on the other, and a middle if you need it. Good, okay. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna take that wicker white, and I'm gonna use, again, the same brush. I'm gonna grab this wicker white, load it on your angle brush, and again with your chisel, so the two lines on the right, we're gonna take our wicker white and we're gonna go almost completely right on top of those lines. So it's gonna look like a kind of like you're starting a rainbow. And then on the other side, yep, up on the chisel, on the other side, you're gonna go on the top of those brown lines like that. So you have your dark and your light. I know it kind of looks crazy, but it's going to work, I promise. So then, same brush again. I'm going to use my Hauser Light Green. And this base coat, this is always going to be what's going to help you blend your light and dark. So don't be afraid. I'm going to take this green up on my chisel, and I'm going to paint right over top of that wicker white. And see how it starts to blend? So you just want to up on your chisel and pull. Up on your chisel and pull and see how it starts to blend and you're getting those ridges in your pumpkin. And they can be as defined as you want them to be or as blend. Um, I did not, but you can if you're getting a little pooling because the paint is so thick, you can add a tiny bit of water. It helps it blend also. So, Depending um, how you're blending, you can just keep adding that green and blend. If you lose some of your definition, don't be afraid to go right back in with your coffee bean brown. Is that working? At least I, I can see what the audience is doing here. So I hope everybody at home, you're blending your pumpkins. We were, when we were practicing this, we were repeating it, it didn't, I didn't think it was really gonna blend, but it really did it. It does it blend. Yep. So if everybody feels good with that. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was seriously laughing. What's going on here with the blending? Help me get one over here. We got some blending going What's on. What's blending? Blend. It looks very blendy to me. It's, it's blending, that's for sure. It's it totally, you'll, it's gonna all come together. Promise, I'm it's gonna happen. Blending. We practiced the other day and I didn't think it was gonna happen, but that's so blendy. <laughs> <laughs> Double blendy over here. So much blending going on. So much blending. <laughs> And again, it, the trick is it's get that, the green, that whatever you're base coating, load that up and blend in. There you go. And then um, if you want to add some more definition that'll help you give a little more shadow, go back into your brown. Dirty brush. Um, and you can trace your pumpkin and just give it a little bit more definition too much just get your green and go back in and blend smooth finish edge to your pumpkin so you guys you did your you know essentially your first pumpkin 
No, you did it. And it's gonna be your background and now we're gonna work forward. And we're gonna do the stems at the end because they're all the same techniques, so. Okay, I'm gonna get started on our orange pumpkin. So that'll be our, mid our middle ground. Now I am gonna wash my brush for this. Again, I'm gonna stay with my half five or six different brushes, all great base coating and detailing. Um, half inch or three eighths is what I recommend. Oh, and here we have a quick question from sure. Gail just to confirm what white are you using? I am using wicker white as my highlight. So coffee bean is gonna be your shadow and um, your wicker white's gonna be your highlight on all of it. So next we're gonna go with our autumn leaves, which is this beautiful like warm orange color. And this is gonna be our middle ground pumpkin. So I'm gonna spread it on my palette. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the green. We're gonna base coat, we're gonna load up our angle brush. We're gonna go up on our chisel and we're gonna pull to get that nice smooth edge and we're gonna define the pumpkin. There we go. And again, if it is not perfectly round, it's totally fine. Pumpkins aren't perfectly round. And then we're gonna fill in. So go ahead and fill that in. So I hope if every, everyone is joining us, is uh, painting along with us, or inspired to paint this soon, getting in the fall season, my uh, wood canvases. I think this, it's going, going great. Crazy. We don't have You're... a ton of questions because I think everyone's okay. just busy painting. So well, okay. <laughs> if you do have a question, let us know in the yeah. comments. We'll be happy to answer that for you and great question Kimberly we actually you can actually purchase all of these products on flat online there's a discount code if you go you can head back to the event page to get the discount code which is still valid for the rest of the month on paints and you can replay this video absolutely anytime on demand on our Facebook page yeah. and you can see how different your pumpkin can be time to time like this one was a little bit small and around this one got a little bit larger as I painted it which is I'm gonna do my ridges on my pumpkin again so same technique I'm gonna um, Get the coffee bean brown. We actually did have a quick question from Nancy if yeah. you primed the canvas, but. I did yeah. not. These are actually um, just wood panels. So this is a 10 by 10 wood panel and with folk art acrylic, there's no need to prime it. You're gonna get great coverage and this wood takes um, the paint really well and you can actually buy these on plat online also. You could do this on a regular canvas, um, a canvas board. Um, you could go larger or smaller even. So good question about priming. And you don't need to seal this or anything either after. Um, you could paint your edges though. So I um, took the gold that we're gonna use at the end and I finished this off to make it a little bit more complete at the end. Um, but you can do that after the painting dries. So we just base coated our um, middle ground pumpkin and now we're gonna go in and add our shadow. So I'm gonna load my angle brush one down the center. It almost looks like a basketball right now. So once you have that, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick up our wicker white. And on the right, we're gonna go on the top and we're gonna follow that line of the brown. Follow that line of the brown. And then we're gonna switch sides because that's you know your light source, so your shadow and your highlight. We're gonna go on the top, top left, top left. Okay, so we have crazy stripes. Now we're gonna take our autumn leaves and we're gonna start to blend just like we did with the green. We're gonna paint and blend. We're gonna pull, so up on that chisel and blend. If we get down into the white pumpkin, will it paint over the color? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Don't worry if you go over, that white's gonna cover. And I'm kinda hitting my uh, easel here, so if you guys can see. Just start pulling down. And it's great that that base color is just gonna blend. Roundness of the pumpkin. A lot of paint there. And like I said, if you're losing, you know, it's not defined, you can add a little bit more brown. If you want a little bit, it's kind of up to you. There you go. And then just like we did on the green, I'm gonna take the coffee bean and I'm gonna outline my pumpkin a little bit, just to give it a little bit more definition and kind of give it that 3D effect with the shading that helps it kind of pop. Okay. 
everybody doing doing good? You guys got yeah. pumpkins? Yeah. Busy painting. Okay. Any questions? Hope everybody's having fun out there painting your pumpkins. Yeah, people Cozy. are getting in okay. the fall mood out good. there. Tammy is feeling like painting pumpkins now. We hope you'll replay this video yeah. if you're not painting along with us uh, live tonight. You can absolutely replay this in the video section of our Facebook page. Tim, I was just doing this. Can you look how thick this paint is? I just was holding it like this by accident. It's kind of cool. Like it doesn't do anything. Dia, she is suggesting a great painting to put behind a cornucopia for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving decor, done. Done. Love it, Catherine. Call it a day. That's Fall to such Thanksgiving. A idea. Yeah. We get excited here. Everyone's yes. laughing at us. <laughs> this is how we really yes. talk to you every yes. day. <laughs> I've already taken down Halloween and put up Fall at Home, so this might go up there with it. And I'm um, just out there. There's a couple people having trouble with the connectivity. We're very sorry. We think we have a strong connection. Just stick with us. It's stopping for a couple people, but just stick with us. Hopefully, it'll give you a moment to catch up uh, painting. So sorry about that, Marsha. Okay, so um, once you're done blending your orange, um, again, we're gonna go back and do all the stems at once. So let that sit, and we're gonna now do our foreground pumpkin. So every time you do this, this is easier. So you did your awesome background green pumpkin and all the shading. We did our middle ground orange, and now we're gonna do our last pumpkin. And we're gonna use, we're gonna wash our brush. So wash our half inch angle brush. Okay, that was really exciting. I'm sure to watch me do this, and I'm stealing this napkin mm -hmm. again. Um, and for our base coating, um, this pumpkin, we're using linen, and linen is one of my favorite colors. Um, Suzanne, who has taught many of our paint nights, um, turned me onto this linen color, and it's now my new favorite, yeah. like neutral. A great neutral. It's it's perfect. Like this is a must have, even if you're not doing this painting. Like this is the paint to have in your collection. So get some folk art linen. And again, we're gonna use our coffee bean brown and our wicker white as our shading and our highlight. And this is nice too, like it's the same, um, you know, kind of repetition. Like once you get the hang, you feel more comfortable um, with the, the strokes and the motions and the feeling of the paint. Like this is a really good one um, to start on. So I'm gonna take my angle brush. I'm gonna um, load up my linen and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna um, go with the pumpkin, the edge of the pumpkin. I'm gonna get up on my chisel and I'm gonna overlap my orange pumpkin and you can see the coverage is fantastic. Like it's gonna go right over that. Question from Stephanie. We're not putting leaves on these pumpkins, but you absolutely can if you'd like to do that at home. You can, you can add. And when we do the, um, the stems of the pumpkin, you could make them kind of twisty and quirky and crazy, or you can make them short and stumpy, or you can add leaves and vines. Um, it's really up to you, and it's a great way you can kind of personalize that and, you know, whatever pumpkin you're feeling. Hey to Debbie out there. We're so glad you like our pumpkins. Is it our, hey Debbie. <laughs> Um, sin is. I told you this is like your must-have color um, in your crafting uh, toolbox in your craft room. You gotta have this folk art linen. So again, I told you that like there's no problem. This is gonna cover anything you've done behind it, and you're gonna get that smooth edge go up on your chisel. So you guys, we're already on our last pumpkin. I, are we good on time? I think we're, everybody's I think doing great. awesome. Everybody doing good out there? Yep. You guys have pumpkins. On our second pumpkin. Told you. So now we're gonna do, we're gonna take our um, same brush, our half inch angle. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna go right into my coffee bean. I'm gonna find my little dip, my center of my pumpkin. And I'm going to tap down up on my chisel and pull. And I'm gonna do my spiders. And my, um, my easel's getting in the way here. And you really want to follow the shape of your pumpkin. So you want to up on your chisel and pull. And so um, I'm doing two, two, two on the left, two on the right, and one down the middle. And then you can also um, go in and you want to outline your pumpkin. It's kind of what they're called, the pumpkin bumps. So we're calling them ridges, the, the pumpkin bumps. So... Um, once you've um, done your shading with your coffee bean, we're going to take our wicker white again. 
Same thing we've done for the green and the orange pumpkin. And on your left, we're gonna go up and trace that brown. Need to add some more paint. This pumpkin's kind of... Gonna take our linen, which is our base color of this foreground pumpkin. And we're gonna blend. And we're gonna go right over our wicker white and our, brown, our coffee bean brown. And we're gonna blend. And you wanna up on your chisel and pull down and really go with that shape of the pumpkin, especially for um, this pumpkin in the foreground is so large. So I hope everybody is uh, making some beautiful pumpkins. Hashtag paint with plaid. If you have any questions, let us know. Any ideas, suggestions, we wanna hear them. Everyone's loving the pumpkins. Hey, yeah. let us know in the comments if you're watching us live. What what makes you feel like fall? A lot of people are loving oh, the pumpkins, exactly. getting in the mood for fall. So yeah. let us know what else, what else you got going on for fall. Yeah. Question from Tammy: If there's a pattern available, and we just you you explained a great way to freehand the pumpkins, I did. like the heart shape. Yeah. So, so. we don't have a pattern, but. Um, it's basically a heart, but it's rounded at the bottom. So you wanna get that nice little dip and then let your pumpkin kind of go off the page. So, and practice, get some scratch paper, you know, some copy paper and draw your heart and go round instead of a point. Hey, another question from Linda. Mm -hmm. um, do you never wash the brush so it blends? Yes, so I like to not wash my brush when I'm blending like this. This is an easy way to blend. Um, because you kind of want, I like that gradation, so I just keep using my brush dirty. Um, when I switch a color, I wash it. Um, and again, in this folk art pack, um, you get a number of angle brushes. I'm using the half inch. You could use the three eighths. Um, when we go to the stem, we'll switch, but um, this half inch angle brush is good for the base coating. Um, and like I said, I am the shading, and I just, I just keep loading my color on there. I don't, no need to wash. And it does help me blend. You get some beautiful colors mixed, you know, you got this linen and the coffee and it mixes all together on your brush. And I like a more painterly effect also. So is everybody, we're pumpkined? Yeah. We're everybody good? good? Okay, yeah. we're looking good. Good there. Okay, so we're gonna wash um, this half inch brush and we're gonna set that aside. Are they doing good? Okay. Need a minute? Yeah, okay, so everybody out there, any questions? I hope everybody's having a good time. We've got a live audience, and I don't know if you guys wanna see, check out, I mean, we've got pumpkins, like, we got awesome. Legit, legit pumpkins. Legit pumpkins. Yeah, if you wanna take a look at legit. what do we have going on here, some amazing shading happening. It's part of our paint with plaid. Learn how to paint a painting in just about an hour. And Lola loves the word painterly. Yes, Pura, you love the word painterly. I do love the word painterly. Love the word painterly. I do love the word painterly. Everyone, that's my husband. He's going to give me a hard time this whole night. Um, I do like the word painterly. Um, I like to see the brush strokes and the paint and the texture. So, again, when I don't wash my brush, I like that look. You can have a more cleaner line if you want to see, you know, kind of more abstract, but I like it to be blended. And then for the people just joining us, let's take a quick look. That yeah. is what we're painting in just about an hour. This is a once a month paint with plaid party night. So you can tune in and paint with us live or you can replay on demand after the fact as well. Yeah. And we're just pausing real quick. Everyone's kind of catching up. I hope everybody at home, we're on a good pace and you got your pumpkins painted and shaded. And so we're almost done. We've, we've got stems and um, I'm gonna tell you about this brushed uh, metal paint that we have here and it's gonna just... Um, it's a wow well moment. It is a wow well moment. I mean, it's the wow well factor. It's totally the wow well factor. When yeah. we were practicing, it was my favorite wow well factor. Yep. And it hides a lot. <laughs> mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we have another question. Yes. We're gonna, Kira's gonna show us how to do a twisted stem. I on am, a on the fly, I'm gonna show you a twisted stem. So again, with your pumpkins, you know, um, they can be anything you want. They don't have to be round, they don't have to be, um, you know. So we'll do a twisty one and we'll see how it turns out. Um, okay, so are we good? Can I do some stems? Are we all yeah, fast? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling good, feeling good. Good, good. So I'm switching to my 3 8 angle brush to do my stems. And I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna go back to that dark navy. So I hope you guys still have that. That's the blue that we did the background. And um, I am going to 
need the blue and I'm gonna um, use my coffee bean and then also my wicker white to do the stems. So to start, I'm gonna go in my coffee bean and what you wanna do is I'm gonna start on the furthest pumpkin, our background pumpkin, and that dip, kind of that middle of the heart where we started our rectangle. And you can kind of go pumpkin. I'm using the coffee bean brown. Yeah. So you can see, you can make this more rounded, but you kind of go in with the shape of the pumpkin. So you're kind of doing like a rounded rectangle. So round at the bottom. You can go a little angled on the top. And I'm gonna do brown. I'm gonna do my base coat of all three. Okay. Then I'm gonna do my middle ground and let's see, we want a twisty. We're gonna do twisty here. We're gonna do twisty. So you just wanna kinda do like a loop-de-loop -loop on there. Is that working for you? I don't know who asked that question. Uh, Catherine, but okay. she's actually gonna re replay it later. Okay, great. Bonus, so That's all right. We're, we're gonna do gonna twisty and we're gonna shade that so it's not gonna look as crazy as it does right now. So as Kira is showing us the stems and shading, I definitely want to give a shout out to Sheena. This is the cutest idea I've ever heard. Oh she yeah, I love her, her. She and her girlfriend last month watched via Skyping together and watched it live at the same time oh, for a long yes. distance girls night. I love that. So she's in her friends in Georgia and Sheena's here in Florida or okay. opposite Florida and Georgia. So that is such a fun idea for a long distance girls night. I love that. Love it. Okay. So I have gone and done, my, my, my twisty thing's getting crazy there. Okay, so we've done our base coating of our stems, the brown. Now I'm gonna take that, na the dark navy, and I'm gonna mix a little bit of that with my coffee bean brown for my shade color, because we wanna go a little bit darker than the brown for shading. Since the coffee bean was the shading in the rest of the painting, you need to go one shade darker. It's gonna kinda make like a brownish gray and just a little bit of the blue into the brown. We're gonna load our brush and we're gonna tap this. We're gonna go up on our chisel and we're gonna go to the base. You want your base to be darker than the top. And again, don't worry if it's, we're gonna go back in and blend. So just get your, okay. Okay, so then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our liquor white and again, I'm gonna use my same brush. It's crazy, right? Loop there. And then, just like we did with the pumpkins, we're gonna go back to our coffee bean, that's our base coat, and we're gonna blend. You wanna go from your light to your dark, and just blend, and keep adding as you, you know, if you're like, oh, that's a little light, that's a little dark, just keep adding and you get some nice tones. And as everyone is blending their stems, question from Charlotte about the mm -hmm. colors that you used for the background, if you could share mm -hmm. that again. Sure, so I used um, wicker white and dark navy, and we blended. So we um, used around the pumpkins, it was solid dark navy, and then we um, added just a little bit of wicker white to the top there. Stems are getting kind of crazy on me. So you did brown and then blue and then white? So you want to mix your um, midnight with your coffee bean for your shadow at your base. And then you want to add your wicker white for your highlight. And your coffee bean is what you're going to use to blend. Always use your base to blend. That's, and it kind of, you know, helps the two meet in the middle there. You can also go back into your coffee bean and um, add your blue, and you can do kind of like an outline like we did with the pumpkins to give it some more definition. My loop de loop. I hope you're not getting that. It looks bad, Tim. <laughs> we have to fix that. Um, hey, it's just a it's a pumpkin with personality. It is totally. It's kind of crazy pumpkin. pumpkin. I like you it. do. Any gourd will be kind of gorgeous. Crazy. Yeah. You will. Gorgeous gourd. So many puns tonight, you guys. <laughs> oh, Sheila, so wait. Funny. Sheila has a question about yep. what we're gonna do for the holidays. Stay tuned, oh. Sheila, to the very end of our fall paint with plaid night and we will preview for you the Christmas painting. We are so excited oh. about this one. 
Okay. So hope does everybody feel good about their stems? Are we good on good on stems? Okay, so we're gonna add the magic. This is the wow moment. So clean your brush. You need a wow? I, I promise this is the wow. And you can um you can stay with your three eighths or you can go back to your half inch. I'm gonna go back to my half inch brush. But either one will work. And so make sure your brush is clean. And so I'm going to use, this is, um, this just came out this year. It is amazing. It is folk art. It is brushed metal. And it's got this really um, awesome matte finish. And it's, um, it was brand new. It's super popular. Just the whole um, metallic trend that's out there. And it comes in um, different types of gold. There's an, this is antique gold, um, silver, uh, like a grayish black, a rose gold. And it's, it's beautiful. Um, so we're going to use this to add the wow moment to your painting and it's going to basically just add like some highlights to the back and to the pumpkin. So we're going to dry brush. So you're only going to need a tiny bit of this because um, a little bit does go a long way on this. Again, you can use this. It's got great coverage so you could do a whole piece in this but for this we're just going to dry brush. And a little tip, um, if you're using a paper plate or a palette, um, paper for your paint. If you use a paper towel to dry brush, kind of helps because you can um, wipe some of the paint off real quick. So I'm going to actually steal one of your napkins. <laughs> oh my okay, so this is folk art brush metal. By brushing, you want to load your brush. Way less paint than you did when you were doing your base coating in your pumpkins. And you want to just wipe off. So you're brushing that off. And you can always go back and add more See what motion. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start at the top. And kind of that crisscross that I did to do the background, I'm gonna just hit like lightly like guy. And you're gonna see it kind of gives it a glow. Tim, I hope you can like kind of see can you guys see that out there? Or how just kind of adds like a little bit of shimmer and it's got that beautiful matte finish, so it's not like in your face. It's just really pretty and like almost iridescent when you look at it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna dry brush. You're gonna go over the ridges of your pumpkin that we made. So those lines, you're gonna go up on your chisel and you're gonna tap down and pull. And I'm gonna follow the lines of my pumpkin. You can see it just adds like a beautiful shimmer. You can um, even go up on your stem, add a little bit to the tip. I'm gonna do this on all my pumpkins. So I'm gonna dry brush up on my angle and pull down right over all those ridges. So you get that really pretty kind of like fall shimmer, kind of like candle glowy look. And you can add as much or as little as you want and add a little bit and then you, you know, kind of stand back and you go back and add more. But this really does add like depth and dimension and it, it does hide if you're like, oh, I don't like little imperfection, like it kind of hides it and blends it. It just gives it a nice sheen. Tell me how you hide things again. <laughs> <laughs> brush metal. Do you like that product plug? <laughs> so no, so we're just dry brushing right on top of what we've done. We just follow all our blend, um, blended ridges and go up on the stems. There you go. Hey, while well, everyone is out there is dry brushing with their folk art brush metal, quick comment from Cindy. Love this comment. Let's take a look at the paint over here. She was asking, is the paint a heavy body? Because it doesn't seem to be runny. It's so true, because it's so creamy, Cindy. You know, show them the So, Cindy, the I was talking because I talk with my hands a lot, and I went like this while I was talking to Tim, and it doesn't move. So it's rich, creamy, and the coverage is amazing. Like, we went right over an orange pumpkin with the wicker white, and there was no problem with the coverage. So, yeah, thanks so, for that comment, Cindy. Yeah, and I like Christina, this little test. Speaking of words that we love, I love the word that you're using, moon. Glow. It is moonglow. Moonlight moon moon harvest. Yes. So that's um, our brushed metal. So again, just dry brush over your background, hit your pumpkins, your stem, and kind of just gives it that iridescent glow. <laughs> so that's it. This is our this is it, guys. This is our moonlight harvest. And Deanna is gonna give you um, a peek at what we're gonna be painting next month. Oh my goodness. Thank I know, you, this Kira. Awesome. We love Thanks. Moonlight Harvest. Thanks, so everybody. For fall here with Moonlight yeah. Harvest. So we just 
finish and sneak peek. This is our beautiful holiday magic piece, which Suzanne will be painting on December 7th. You will see the supply list. It's actually gonna publish, we're a little early, so it's gonna publish at 8.30. So stay tuned on our Facebook page to RSVP now and get the complete supply list as well as a promo code for paint uh, with plaid to paint holiday magic with us next month. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Bye. <laughs>